thumbed up. Hello again, this is Dr. Tony, you chiropractic clinic in Upland, California. This is Beth Smith in South Carolina. We are on StreamYard, as you can see on the corner there. Um, I want to understand is how do we keep how do we keep health simple? How do we focus on what we're eating, putting on our skin and on, on our body? Understanding with Beth, how do we get that our mind to change? Okay, if we can change our foods and maybe our skincare too can make over about healthy. It seems real simple, right? Why doesn't people do it all the time? And how do we know where we start from with lab testing and then pause in the line testing again to make sure we're seeing the difference over time? So, and, and Beth is the founder, I call her the founder of Better Health by Beth. Okay, so we'll see links in the show too, as you see at the bottom of the show notes. Connect with her once you hear the talk to how do you keep life simple? We're all going to eat. We're all going to need skincare. At least I do. We all wash our body. So can we make whatever we put in our body or on our body healthier for us? So Beth, take it over. Tell me exactly how you got into this. Sure. So honestly, it started with my own personal health crisis. Mm -hmm. um, I started early in my 20s getting um, recurrent sinus infections and um, just had ho horrible, even in my young 20s, horrible hormonal imbalances mm -hmm. and um, just went and did what everybody does. I went to the doctor and I listened to them when they said, take this pill or this antibiotic and do this and you'll be fine. And um, I did that well into my 40s. And um, in my 40s, my health started to decline. And um, I really had a lot of uh, really, really bad hormonal issues, ended up having a hysterectomy. And that was kind of the turning point after my surgery, my body just started shutting down. And um, I just was going to the doctors for help and was basically told your labs are normal. Yes, you've gained 50 pounds in the last year, but just eat less and move more. And um, here's some antibiotics because you have no immune system. And I just, you know, in my late forties, I just thought, I, I can't, I don't want to live this way. I'd always been very active. I wanted to be very active. Um, I wanted to enjoy my life and I just was not enjoying life. And so I really went on a quest to heal personally. Um, I've always been that kind of person that if you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to find a way to do it. And I called you for you, right? Like if you tell me exactly. that, I'm do it. Perfect. Exactly. Exactly. So I really went on a journey to um, heal myself and really found um, a lot of information that I didn't know. I didn't know that the antibiotics that I was taking four or five times a year were destroying my gut health and my immune system. I didn't know that the birth control pills that I had been on for 20 plus years to control the hormonal symptoms were destroying my gut health and contributing to a lot of things. So um, I, I really learned a lot about healing my gut, healing my hormones, um, took that journey myself. And then just kind of in 2020, when I think everybody out there kind of started reevaluating their life um, and kind of what what path they were on. That was when I really, I kind of thought, okay, corporate America is not for me anymore. This isn't what I want to do. I want to help people. Or and I know, yeah. Oh, uh, aviation industry. Okay. okay. So, yeah. So um, I really kind of, I had been for several years, been kind of, you know, spreading the word to all of my friends and family and sharing everything. And I just remember talking to a friend one night and saying, I need a new passion. I'm just not passionate about this anymore. And she said to me, you have a passion. And yeah. it, just, it was like the light bulb came on. And that was when it was, it kind of turned around for me. Um, and I went um, through the integrative health practitioner program and decided, I know for me, it was super isolating when I was going through all of this. And I didn't know that there were thousands and thousands of people out there going through the same thing. And so it just kind of became my passion and my mission to help others that are going through their own personal crisis and know that it's not what they want for their life to, to kind of move forward. You can almost empathize what they went through. If Absolutely. You have the story and it doesn't matter if someone's in their teens 20s, 30s, or 40s, you can relate with each of them. Exactly. No exactly. And, and getting into it too, with the schooling, how does the schooling work? Uh, so it's all online. Um, and it is, um, the program that I took, there are tons of excellent programs out there. My program is through a, a naturopathic doctor, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Um, and, um, he really just takes you through, there are a couple different levels that you can go through. Um, and the first level is really all about nutrition and lifestyle and, 
um, supplementation where needed and just really the toxin removal. Um, and it takes you in depth through all of that. And he really takes you through what his practice of 20 plus years, um, what he's done and really teaches you how to do that and help your clients. And then the second level is the functional medicine lab testing and really um, qualifies you to, to be able to do that and use that to help move your clients further along as well. Um, so it's pretty in-depth training. It's over a hundred hours of lecture mm -hmm. um, tests you have to pass. It's, it's pretty intense, but it took everything that I had kind of started to learn on my own and really solidified it for me. It almost, once you, once you know the information and apply it, it becomes part of your nature. So you know it all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not something that happens overnight. None no. of the changes that I made happen overnight. It's been a course of five years that I have really just personally made the changes. And that's one of the things with my clients that I really focus on. I think that's why people have failed in the past. They try to do things and they say nothing's ever worked for me because I think so many times we jump into this and we see a new lifestyle or a new plan or something and they say, I'm going to do it and they jump all in. And so I really focus on making slow changes, finding the things that are most, you know, the biggest things that you need to change and really focusing on one thing at a time and reminding my clients too, that it's not about perfection. It's never about perfection. It's, it's really, I aim for 80, 20, but in the beginning I, I wasn't doing all the stuff I know to do 80% of the time. I was maybe doing it 40% of the time and I had to work up to that. So that's really what it's about is small changes daily. When I think when you talk about too, the longevity of, of okay, treatment is going to take you, months, even years to see the overall benefits because your body needs time to adjust too, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it, it's, yeah, that's the thing you have to remember. It's not an overnight process. Mm -hmm. I work, obviously when people come to me, it's because they've been suffering, whether it's from gut health or hormone imbalances or whatever it is. And so we do things fast changes that are going to get them feeling better, but just remembering that you didn't get to where you are overnight and you're not going to feel better overnight. And so it's really, yeah, over time, over the weeks and the months and the years, and, you know, a year from now, you're going to look back and you're going to think, gosh, I can't even, I can barely even remember feeling that bad. When, and when, when you have that, that, that vision, that visionary uh, picture, at that point you can actually go, okay, I want to get here, but I'd be realistic what's it to get there. And I'm going to do the steps in between to actually make, take that path. Right. Exactly. So, and that's one thing that I really focus on with clients too, because it's so much about the mindset and really shifting your mm -hmm. mindset and changing that. Okay. Everything's got to change. I'm going to go get rid of everything in my pantry. That's not healthy. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to throw away everything in my house. That's non talk that's got any kind of bad thing in it. And I'm going to exercise seven days a week. Those are not realistic. So tiny goals, taking one step at a time, um, mm -hmm. achievable steps. That's what's really going to keep the changes long-term. And let's go right to the mindset then too, as mm -hmm. we're here, how do you assess someone's mindset going into becoming your client? patient versus where you want them to develop over time? How do you get that mindset to shift that paradigm shift? So we talk in, a, in our early sessions, we talk a lot about, I have them really just share with me kind of their thoughts around food. And what a lot of us have been taught and what a lot of us say is, oh, I was bad this weekend. I ate blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Or I was good this weekend. I only ate vegetables. Um, or I shouldn't eat this. I know it's bad, but blah, blah, blah. And really shifting that mindset and kind of t assessing where they're at with that thought process, because that's where most of us are. And really working through talking about the, changing our mindset that food isn't good or bad. Food is food. What's, what we need to look at is when I eat this, how is it going to affect my body? Is it something that's going to nourish my body and help me achieve my goals? Or is it something that's going to make me continue to feel the way I felt? And really taking away the stigma of food is good or food is bad. And instead looking at it as, is this something that's going to nourish me? Or is it something that's going to continue to keep me where I'm at? And so we um, do a lot of journaling and talking through that in every session. I, I have my clients when they feel like they've had a setback or they've They've had a, a time where they were bad, mm -hmm. um, really 
write that, uh, journal it, think through the process. And then when we get together and have our one on ones, we really talk about how we can shift that mindset. Why? Why did you feel that this food was bad? What in your past has made you associate good or bad to this particular food? And instead, let's talk about how it made you feel physically. Good. Let's talk about, um, you know, the morning after you ate that half a cheesecake. How did you feel? Did you wake up groggy? Did you wake up with a headache? Did you have a hard time getting started that day? So really thinking more about whatever you put in your mouth, it's fine. We all make a choice every day and none of us are perfect. Trust me. I never met a French fry I didn't love. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's really more about just making that conscious choice and training ourselves to choose the nourishing, nourishing things, the things that are going to heal our bodies more often than we choose the things that we really love and taste good, but that aren't helping us achieve our goals. We said it before, it's, it's the 80-20 rule, even less than that too. And over time, letting your body build up to that, that habit, both with discipline, with mindset, and also physicality too. How much do people, I guess, either have either give themselves grace or don't give themselves grace when they have a bad weekend or a bad meal? What do people normally, how do you get them, how do you walk them through that? So I do find most people do not give themselves grace. Mm -hmm. um, most of my clients have been yo-yo dieters most of their lives and have tried every diet out there. And again, I have been that person, every diet on the planet and could do any of them successfully, but can never maintain it. And so I think they, they, they fail to give themselves grace and mm -hmm. think that they failed. And so what's the point? Um, so again, we really focus on, not looking at it as failure, but looking at it as a learning opportunity. Again, focusing on, all right, so you had a whole weekend and you ate cheeseburgers and pizza and ice cream and cheesecake and all the things all weekend long. So let's talk about how your body feels. What's your body telling you about it? Because that's really what it's about. Um, is not deprivation. We can all eat those things from time to time, but it's really about finding the balance of where, what can I eat? And my body doesn't scream at me that it's, it's not happy. So that's the, that's the biggest thing is really, it's not about deprivation. It's not about punishing yourself. It's not about, I failed, so I might as well give up. But let's talk about what is my body telling me after this weekend that I did all of these things. And, and why is that important for your body to tell you or, or read that because, I mean, what, what's the reason behind that? Well, again, it goes back to really finding a way. You, I used food as medicine to heal my body. That was where I started. I didn't know about functional medicine lab testing when I started healing. Um, but it's really about our body's telling us what it needs. And that's what I tell my clients all the time. Your body is always going to tell you what it needs. And so all you have to do is learn to listen. We've ignored it for years. We ignore that pain in our knees or that pain in our back or the migraines. And we just assume that it's, it's whatever. Part of life. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's part of life. It's part of getting older. Um, but really all of those things are our body telling us what it needs. And if you get in the habit of, putting those things into your body that it needs. And then you don't do it for a weekend. It tells you very oh. quickly that mm -hmm. I'm not happy with this. I'm not sleeping well. My eyes, for me, if I consume too much dairy, my eyes just water and they're puffy. Mm -hmm. And um, so just learning what your food sensitivities are, learning what things your body loves and just putting those things into it. And it's really, again, not something that happens overnight. You have to make small changes. And as those changes happen, you learn to listen and you learn to feel it. And after a few years, you don't want to have a whole weekend of eating cheesecake oh. and burgers and French fries because you know how it, it, it's kind of like, oh. you know, if you're in your twenties, you can go out and, and, hit the bars all weekend and wake up Monday morning and feel fine. But if you're in your forties, you can't do that. It's kind of the same thing with food. Once you learn to listen. Um, good, good. good. Yeah. And a lot of what you're getting into is how do we choose the right foods that help us stay healthy versus foods that make us feel like blah Monday mm -hmm. morning. How mm -hmm. do you help people, I guess, categorize or how do you help them organize their pantry, their fridge as they go, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm used to this. How do I now shift over how do you get them to shift that or paradigm shift back to a better 
better food choice, if you want to call that. Mm -hmm. So we focus a lot on really one ingredient foods. That's kind of what I say is um, yeah. if it has more than one ingredient, your body may not love it. Um, but really, even when we do, because we all, I mean, we all need some convenience in our life. And so really just kind of focusing on those ingredients that might not be from nature, kind of my rule of thumb is if it didn't have a mother or grow in the ground, you probably shouldn't eat it. Um, so just like a small, I posted a video on, I think it was on my TikTok last week. Um, you can buy a jar of crushed tomatoes, organic crushed tomatoes, and um, it's one ingredient and put it on your stove and throw some spices on it and you have spaghetti sauce or you can go buy a jar of pre-made spaghetti sauce that has 16 ingredients in it. So um, it, it's just really kind of shifting that mindset of of looking at um, single single ingredient things and how you can combine those to make delicious meals. And all of my clients get a um, pantry list. I kind of give them a list of things that are great to stock their pantry. And I always tell them, don't feel like you have to go throw everything in your pantry out. Mm -hmm. Replace things. As you run out of one thing, replace it with a better alternative. And we really focus on just reading ingredient labels. And, you know, if you can't pronounce it, it's probably not something you want to put in your body. I think a lot when you get down to it, can we keep, like you, know, you mentioned before too, keeping things very simple and mm -hmm. do tomatoes today and then maybe, okay, if that's good for me, what do you do now my beans in my in my cabinet? What do I do with those? How about my pasta or what else going on? How do I pick the right, if you want to cut a simple piece of chicken, maybe add it to my, add to my stuff. At that point, you're getting someone used to keeping things simple, but also now they're comfortable with that too, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about small changes. So yes. Again, make it, making the pantry swaps first, you know, finding a better pasta, finding, you know, learning. And sometimes it's just because they've never used an ingredient. Mm -hmm. They don't, they, they're afraid of it. So helping them understand. Um, I provide recipes. Um, I'm Good. definitely, definitely not a recipe. I haven't read a recipe book or anything like that, but just things that I use, I provide to my clients um, to get them started. Just simple, basic things. You know, you can, make delicious soups and, and use all one ingredient things and throw them in a pot. And it's, it's a delicious meal. Well, it's, it's amazing when you get down to it, the taste you have from just a can of tomatoes, can you mm -hmm. use to that taste, which makes it a little differently than a ragu or exactly. something like that has a brand of that store, whatever it might be. At that point, exactly. you go, what, what, it's not a big deal, but people don't realize their habit has been this for so long. They want that. They've had that since maybe even a kid that's your comfort food. That's their, something where they're used to. Yep, exactly. Habit is a lot of it. Habit mm -hmm. is so huge. I eat this because I've always eaten it. You know, when I was when I was little and I didn't feel good, my mother would make me a can of chicken and star soup. And so, you know, I was in my 30s or 40s before I finally realized, okay, this is not what I should be eating. And it's definitely not what I want to be feeding somebody I love when they're sick. I want to give them, you know, a, a more robust version of that. That's got, you know, all the good things in it, the bone broth that's going to actually help them heal and turmeric that's going to help them and all of the things. So, yeah. And going to turmeric also in ingredients, do you get people list ingredients to keep it very simple to add to their tomato sauce, to add to their soup? <laughs> How do you work that out with them? How do you keep them to kind of shift to where they can actually do something, not just lorry salt and everything? Like something yeah, like yeah. So um, I, again, that's part of the, just the pantry stock. Um, mm -hmm. I give them just a list of spices to use and all of my recipes. Um, I just, I, I put everything in there. Turmeric is one of my very favorite spices. And yeah. then um, turmeric, cumin, and um, paprika are pretty much in everything I cook. <laughs> Sometimes my husband tells me to cool it with the turmeric. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a big oregano guy. Give, give yeah. me oregano, I put on anything. That just yeah. me. Oregano and lemon juice are two of my favorites too. Best Do you have people food. start start minimizing their salt intake too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And really even just minimize the, the salt intake, but really focusing on good salt. Like when you're going to use it, use good stuff. Don't use the white stuff. That's why people have high blood pressure, but use something. I, I personally use one that has minerals in it. Um, mm -hmm. I use pink salt. Um, and so, yeah, really focusing on um, helping them understand all of those things. Salt's not the enemy. 
you just need to use the right kind. And so getting rid of that, yeah, the um, seasoned salt, get rid of that. <laughs> let's, let's show you what these other spices are. And again, a lot of people just don't know what they are, how to use them. So yeah, the um, part of the, one of the um, big pieces of my one-on-one -on -one is just really helping people learn to love foods that are going to feed their body what it needs. And when you go down to proteins also, how do you start getting people to understand certain proteins may be good for you, some of them be bad for you for your overall health? How do you get them to kind of choose or what I think would you recommend for them for the, the meat or a protein type of um, uh, choices? So I give them a protein uh, list too of things that are better for them. And we really talk about um, better choices. So if you're going to have red meat, that's fine, but choose grass fed red meat. You know, if you're going to eat chicken, chicken's great, but choose a pasture raised chicken. And we talk really about um, kind of why in the, the way that traditionally raised meats are um, processed. And again, we're, I know we're, we're going to talk a little bit about toxins, but just the things that are in there, they're eating grain and grain is sprayed with, um, pesticides. And so they eat that, it goes into their, their bodies and their bodies are filled with pesticides. They're, um, you know, they're fed antibiotics to keep them healthy in the conditions that they're raised in. And so, um, you know, while eating grass fed meat or pasture raised chicken is maybe a little more expensive. If your goal is to feed your body, the things that it needs to be healthy, then it's kind of worth it. And what I always say is you're going to pay for it up front or you're going to pay it on the back end because yeah. you know, 10 years ago, I was not eating any of those things and I wasn't paying for those expensive meats up front, but I was paying for it on the back end with, you know, six or seven or eight doctor's visits a year. Mm. And a lot of it is like you're saying too, is once someone, once a chicken or a, or a cow eats or is fed antibiotics, that goes into their fat cells. That sits in there. So when you're eating a piece of meat, that fat cells is in, you're eating that also too. So it never Absolutely. really goes away. So realize mm -hmm. when you're eating healthier foods, why not just eat a little bit less at that point and get the protein you need, the more, if you want to call it more quality protein versus having to have a four by four animal style in and out burger, which I love. I love those things. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and focusing on, on the, the simple things like you're mentioning, Go to toxins also too. How are things in our, if you want to call it our pantry, our fridge, our house, how do toxins affect our body? Um, so this is something that I think so many people don't realize. Our livers are made to process toxins, mm -hmm. but we live, I like to call it toxic soup. We live in a toxic soup world and we're just exposed mm -hmm. everywhere. And it's all, I mean, it's in places we would never think about. And so our body is taking all this in. If we're eating traditionally raised meat, we're... It, what they say you are what you eat well our food is what it eats too and so we're eating these animals that have been traditionally raised and they're eating grains that have been sprayed with pesticides or they're being fed antibiotics so it's in our food if we're eating non-organic vegetables and especially you know we can't afford maybe afford to buy everything organic but we certainly want to look at the things that we're, we're eating and there's some things that you just always want to make sure if you're going to eat it it needs to be because our foods are sprayed with pesticides and you know if strawberries are an example if you buy non-organic strawberries you can't get the pesticides out of that strawberry because it there's nothing to wash it off of you could wash an avocado before you cut it up and get, you know, those, a lot of that stuff off or a banana, but you can't do that with a strawberry. So in our food, it's just there. We, I mean, there's no way we can avoid it. Um, and it can feel overwhelming sometimes, but again, like I tell my clients, every small step you take makes a difference. And so you have to do as many things as you can to kind of um, lessen the load. Um, so in our household, we don't think about it. There are so many toxins. Fragrance is one of the hugest toxins that we encounter. Um, it's in air fresheners. It's in, you know, our laundry detergent. It's in our candles that we burn in our homes. And that's something that so many people have sensitivities to. And it, it, it affects our lungs and it affects our skin. And, you know, people will say, I have this weird skin rash and I don't know where it is. Well, what are you washing your clothes in? Is your laundry detergent full of fragrance? Because 
I don't think we think about it, but the sheets we sleep on and the clothes we wear and the towels that we use when we bathe and all of these things have been washed in this laundry detergent that has chemicals and fragrance. And then we're putting it on our body or we're sleeping in it for eight hours a night. So well, a lot of this, our, our skin is, is porous, correct? Exactly. So more of these things right into our bloodstream. Mm -hmm. It's not a shield against these things. Exactly. And, and the fragrances too in candles goes right into your nasal cavity. So mm -hmm. that way it gets in that way also. So realize even though it's not visible, it can still be a toxin. When you look, when you said you're going down to laundry detergent, you're going to the root cause, what affects your clothing, what affects you, you sleep in too, like you had mentioned. At that point, why not just knock that out? That we have to worry about other stuff down the line. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, and these things are there. Uh, like you said, it's all a root cause. When a client comes to me and they say, I'm having hormone issues. Sure, we're going to take it, do a lab and we're going to look and see what hormone issues sure. you're having. But we're going to look at all the things in your life, because if you're using a laundry detergent that's full of fragrance and it has 16 different chemicals in it, those chemicals are all known to disrupt your hormones, to affect your skin, to affect your lungs. All of the things that you're telling me you have issues with, we need to start the the testing is fabulous but we need to start with what you're putting in your body and what you're putting on your body and those are the two most important things because if we're just putting more toxins into our body than we can take out then that's part of the problem that so it only, only detoxifies so much at that point you're going to feel it's going to let you know hey look we're over capacity here let's hit something going and with laundry detergent, what do you recommend laundry detergent? what what brand do you recommend what do you what do you um, so Kind of the gold standard that I love is Branch Basics. Um, it is, it's a, it's a great brand. Um, they have non-toxic. They actually just came out with uh, dishwasher tablets too. Branch Basics is fa fabulous. But if you aren't, you know, interested in, in ordering online and you just want to be able to pick up something, um, they have tons of, you know, fragrance free, um, seventh generation is one that I've, I've used in the past um, that, you know, Make your small changes. That's a great place to start. Just if you're not ready to go online and buy Branch Basics, then go to your local store and buy a fragrance-free, you know, uh, seventh generation. And start well, then you start adding the softener. You start adding the, the little tablets to the little beads mm -hmm. that might put the stuff yeah. too. So make sure you get some more beads. I'm like, oh, sure, whatever. That's what yeah. I do. But something to where when you start adding that stuff, it's almost like how much are you worried about getting coming fragrant versus just detoxify. So you don't have, uh, as you want to call it smells where you don't have those problems. Right. Yeah. I mean, you definitely want to kind of do it as much as you can, like all of that stuff. And that's been a big battle in my house. We actually switched. I got rid of dryer sheets years ago, even before I knew about toxins, um, because every time I would walk in my laundry room, it would take my breath away. Wow. Um, so even before I knew any of this, and then I went to a liquid fa uh, laundry detergent, but now we've switched to dryer balls. So it's been a, the wool dryer balls. And it's been a huge fight in my house because our clothes don't have a fragrance to them anymore. And so um, uh, one of the things that you can do if that fragrance is if you just can't let go of it and you really need to detox is um, use the wool dryer balls and put some essential oils in there, some lavender oil or whatever scent you like. Um, and that adds just that, that little bit of a smell. Um, so yeah, just taking that, that away. And it's, it's huge. It's, amazingly huge when you just make one small change what a difference it makes in your We're health adding the show notes to a lot of this are these little things you know people can do to mm -hmm. make their life simpler and the, and the thing is to you it may take you a week to two weeks and kids always complain no matter what uh, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. to me but as an adult that hey look i don't notice it anymore it doesn't mm -hmm. i don't need that scent anymore. that and you go back to scent you're like that smells weird to me yes you go back yes. to that or go back to foods or other things too now that tastes weird to me Yes, because now absolutely. you've changed your habits, you've adjusted to what's more natural versus what you needed all that flavor, all that taste, all those smells all the time. 
Yeah. And you do, you adjust, your body gets used to it and your taste buds change and your, your senses yeah. do, they change. And you will find that um, if you, if you make the switch and again, make it slow, don't switch everything at once, just, you know, switch the laundry detergent first and then the fabrics oftener a few months later. So small, sustainable changes. That's what it's about. But so um, if, you, if you do it as a wife or husband who does laundry and unless someone says something, you're like, I didn't do anything and we're good. You know? Yep. Exactly. They don't have to notice anything. Yeah. yeah, I remember when I switched from jarred tomato sauce to or jarred spaghetti sauce to yeah. making my own. The first few times, the kids were like, "This tastes weird. What did you do?" You know. And now they exactly. won't eat the jarred stuff. But <laughs> yeah, but the first few times, it was very. It was like, "What's going on here?" <laughs> And a lot of it is once you start cooking that way, go, hey, now what now what I want, what else can I put in there? What else can I do? You become interested in, in how you cook, not just warming up something in a can or in the microwave anymore. Exactly. Exactly. It becomes more of a quality, quality of if you won't call it quality of life, because now you have something else you can form a habit of. Now, I may not be a chef, but can I make something that's natural? And because I want to make, I want to spend the time to make it, not just put something out there real quick. Exactly. And I've, I've learned to love cooking. I, when I got married, I could not cook. I was terrible at it. And even afterwards, I mean, I would open up cans and jars and, you know, um, it didn't come overnight, but as I learned that it can be really simple, you know, all I need to do is throw some chicken in the oven and cut up some Brussels sprouts and I've got an amazing dinner, you know, mm -hmm. just those the right spices on there and it's fabulous. Well, you bring something up too, where someone doesn't cook in their, in their lifestyle, looking for something simple, something quick, that plant mm -hmm. something may be inexpensive so they can get at the store real quick and bring it home and put it on, on the plate and call it food. So uh -huh. we want to make sure like you're saying, how do we, Hey, take a step back. Let's look at this as a way so we feel better tomorrow. We take our, our health better through our foods and our beverages also too. At that point, our body can get stay healthy. Go on the skincare too for me, Beth. How does skincare affect our body? Um, kind of the same way that, uh, with what we were talking about with household cleaners, yeah. with laundry detergents and candles and all of that. You're putting it onto your body, whether it's through shampoo or your moisturizer or whatever it is. And your skin is porous. It's your largest organ. And, you know, if you think about it, sometimes when you go to the doctor, they give you a cream to put on, you know, whether it's a steroidal cream or, you know, a lot of women are on hormone replacement creams or they're on a um, estrogen patch or whatever. They're giving you this medicine transdermally because it absorbs into your body. And so if that medicine is absorbing into your body, all of the products that you put onto your skin are going to absorb into your body too. And um, the cosmetic industry, it's interesting here in the U S it's not really regulated. And so they, they can even use things like lead and mercury and aluminum. Right. Um, and it's, it's not really illegal as long as it's below a certain amount, but I don't know about you. I don't want lead in, what I'm putting on my skin in any amount. Um, we actually here in the U S there are only 11 banned chemicals that the FDA says can't be used in cosmetic care versus the EU, which has over 1300 banned chemicals. <coughs> so um, it's, it's important to be aware of what you're putting on your skin because a lot of the things that we put on our skin are known um, hormone disruptors. They're known to, interact with your immune system, all of these things. And so if you are having mystery symptoms, that's mm -hmm. one of the first things we're going to look at. We're looking again, going back to what you're putting in your body, but we need to look at what you're putting on your body too, because if you've been using this product for years and years and years, and it has something in it that is, is creating an immune reaction in you, that's, we got to stop putting that on your skin and find a better replacement for it. And with that, I'm putting, putting in the show notes right now too. What is a good brand if, if you want to give someone a shortcut to that they could get, I guess, anywhere? Uh, and at that point, that might be something they could want to switch over to, at least look into uh, if they're having these problems or having medical problems that are hormone related. Because again, we talked about skin being porous. How do they now? Okay, how do, um, there's so many things out there. Uh, what's a good brand or brands look into? Um, so I have lots of those, and I actually have a little. Um cheat sheet for your listeners that I'll tell you about at the end um, that offers some brands. Um, one that you can buy anywhere. Um, it's at Target, Walmart. Um, it's a brand called Coco Kind. 
C-O-C-O kind. Um, I really like it. They have a a moisture stick that I love um, and it's a very affordable brand. Um, But I've got lots of brands um, that I will share um, with a resource I've put together for your listeners Mm -hmm. and some of the things that they should avoid in their skincare products. You can put the show notes ready too. So that's in there. Um, Let me see if I can spell out. There we go. They're Mm -hmm. Coco kind, correct? At Target. Okay. Got it. Got it. And I think a lot of us, when we get down to it, you're going to get something from Beth when you when you talk to Beth eventually and, and meet with her. You're going to realize, hey, look, healthcare, skincare, uh, body wear, if you want to call it that, fragrance, and things around my, my house, I can do, I can keep it very, very simple and keep myself body, my body healthy, even with okay. diet, nutrition, beverages too. So okay. can we overall simplify our lives at that point, get what we need to get from the store and get out versus being, if you want to call it marketed to, which they do a great job marketing. Um, I want to say in grocery stores, especially, and even in, uh, in, in department stores of, and my brother worked for a Red Bull is whatever's that eye level people usually get. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you're you're going to find that Coco kind brand, not here. You're going to have yeah. to, search for it. you're going to have to go, okay, how do I go away from here? What's that eye level and grab and go versus, Hey, let me take a minute. We turn, turn the can around turn the ball around and read the ingredients. What is this? Whatever it says. Yep, can we, exactly. can we bring it down and simplify it? So we go back next time and realize like, like Beth is saying too, it may take you a month, two months, three months to get your system down, but Beth will help you as she's been saying to get your system down. So it keeps it very simple for you over time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I it, We work on building small habits. It's about building habits and making it a routine. Um, I would say with the whole marketing thing, when you go to the grocery store, two tips that I give my clients, stay to the perimeters because all the bad stuff is in the middle. Um, <laughs> stick to the perimeters. And also when you do look at the ingredient list, the more ingredients it has, the less you should consume mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. again, one ingredient foods, but if you're going to purchase something that has more than one ingredients, ingredient, the fewer the ingredients, the better. Yes, yes, yes. And do you recommend like a natural hair, like a natural air spray or, or do you kind of stay away from those completely? Um, I don't really use them. I yeah. don't use them. Um, I think it's primarily pure, which is one of the companies that I love. Um, yeah. I use their deodorant. Um, uh, I've gotten away from again, the toxic deodorant, but um, they have a room spray. I think it's called everything spray or something like that. That is really, it's a non-toxic. So if you really just want to scent, um, a lot of people use essential oils. I do not diffuse those um, only because I have cats and they can be harmful to cats. So um, I, I just don't use them. I've just gotten used to not using them. There are some good non-toxic candles out there too. You just want to look for candles that use essential oils instead of fragrance. Yeah. Nice. And go back to your lab testing. How does your lab testing work? Um, So it's all at home. And so uh, kind of how it works is um, the first thing I'll do is uh, meet with a potential client, kind of talk through what their issues are. And we'll map out um, kind of what we think kind of based on their symptoms we need to focus on. So um, it's all at home testing. Um, We look at, depending on what tests we decide to use, we look at vitamin and mineral levels. We look at heavy metals. um, We look at um, if you're having gut issues, we can do tests to test for parasites, bacteria overgrowth, yeast overgrowth. Um, We can do food sensitivity testing. So if you're having issues there, um, we can look at that. Um, So it all comes to your home uh, with detailed instructions. I usually go over it in detail once the client gets it. Um, It's either a finger prick or a urine sample, a stool sample, depending on the test. And then it takes a couple of weeks for it to come back. Once it comes back, um, I meet with the client and I go over it in detail, explain to them what the results are, what it means. And then we come up with a, an individualized plan. And we've already, prior to them testing, we've already been working on the nutrition piece of it. Um, so moving after we get the lab tests, we really work on um, if there are supplements that are needed, what kind of a plan for supplementation. Um, we've already worked on kind of toxin removal. We continue mm-hmm. with that. Um, I just had a client that did the heavy metal testing and she came back. She She's been in and out of doctor's offices for the last year. Wow. And just with terrible, terrible symptoms. 
And every single time got the, your labs are normal speech. And so we did this heavy metal test wow. and her heavy metals were through the roof. And so we immediately started on her on a heavy metal protocol to get those levels down. And within a few days, she was already feeling better. So um, just really, we started her with actually a functional medicine detox and she was feeling amazing after that. And she still got some work to do, but it's just, you know, we do, we kind of look at what the test results show and we work from there. And where do heavy metals usually come from in someone's someone's testing? Um, it can come from different places. Um, sometimes if your mineral levels are off and your body is under a lot of stress, you can have a hidden copper toxicity. Mm -hmm. um, you, aluminum a lot of times comes from uh, uh, traditional deodorants have aluminum in them. Mm -hmm. And so um, it could come from that um, or a buildup from there. It can come from cookware. Um, if you use a lot of foil, if you cook your food in foil a lot, um, it can come from there. Mercury um, can come from fillings in your teeth, mm -hmm. um, from bad dental work. Um, so, yeah, those are kind of some things that we look at. And and there there are some hidden things that that when somebody comes to you and says, this is what's going on, that a light bulb is like, okay, it could be this. Let's talk about your dental work. And they look at you well, like you're do with, with uh, medication. Someone's on medications a lot. Yeah. At that point, what would that what would that cause in their their testing? So um, it, again, if it, if the medication's got heavy metal metals in it, it it's going to show. Um, as elevated, especially if their body isn't synthesizing it, their body's right. already got some, some issues going on. You know, again, our livers are made to get rid of all that stuff, but if yeah. we've already got that toxin overload and, you know, we're using all the fragrance and we're eating all the traditionally grown meats and we're doing all the things, mm -hmm. our bodies can only process so much. Mm -hmm. And again, like you said, it just stores in our fat cells and then mm -hmm. it comes out when it has a chance. And that's when we start having those symptoms. Like you said earlier, like you said, initially, your body will tell you what's going on. Yeah. The problem is when you talk about you go to your medical doctor, MD with it, who your insurance covers at that point, they're going to go, well, looks good enough to me. We're good to go. Go just yeah. go see a therapist or something. I don't know. At yeah. that point, you're, you're <laughs> realize they're there. They've done they've they're doing enough to keep you, if you want to call it not sick in their mm -hmm. mindset, because you don't have cancer. You don't, you don't have to be hospitalized, but your quality of life is not where you want it to be. Exactly. How do, we, how do we get you there by using best best information, her knowledge and her testing and her know it all about your household stuff? I'm going to use that. I don't have big words in my, my vocabulary. At that point, making sure you're living a simple, simple, healthy life. We put in your body, put on your body and in your laundry detergent, my friends. Would I miss anything, Beth, for our first show? No, I don't think so. I think that um, those were the things that we really wanted to address. And that's kind of where everybody needs to start. The lab testing is fantastic. And it's going to tell us kind of what the root of what's going on is. But if we're not addressing all the other things, then we're never going to get that root kind of taken care of. So yeah, starting with what you're putting in your body, making sure that you're listening to what your body's telling mm -hmm. you and what you're putting on your body. And that's the first step. Even if you can't afford lab testing, mm -hmm. everybody can afford to make small changes. Because we're going to buy products anyways, right? We're going to buy food so, anyways. Why not, why not do different foods that may actually be cheaper because you're not going to buy as much sometimes and still feel like you're getting healthier over time? Exactly. And it may, it does in the beginning, it may feel more expensive, mm -hmm. but when you're not going to the doctor every three weeks, I haven't had a doctor yeah. visit other than just for like yearly blood work yeah. in over three years, mm -hmm. you know, and I was going every two to three months when I was mm -hmm. going through my health crisis. And, and, you're so, feeling, and you're feeling unhealthy too. You weren't even feeling yeah. good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I have more energy now than I've ever had. I, you know, I can do the things I want to do. I can, you know, my husband and I love to hike and we love to hike, you know, challenging hikes. And I just got to the point that I couldn't do that. And so to be able to do that again and to, you know, do the things that I love to do. And that's the most important thing, right? Can we, can we have a quality of life so we can actually do what we want to do, be happy at work, at home with family and not feel like, Oh, you guys go ahead. I'll be in the wheelchair. In the yeah. back, in the back seat somewhere. I don't know. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and so I did too. I put all your links to your. I think it's your Facebook, your Instagram, and also links to what you had mentioned to you had sent me that link um, for the resource guide to BetterHealthByBeth.com. 
that point will again this is this is people understanding hey health isn't that complicated we look right. at what you're doing every day anyways all right exactly exactly yeah and the resource is great um it goes right into what we talked about um it's got uh the top eight ingredients you want to avoid nice. in your personal care products and why and um then i um have listed some brands that i personally use and love and a lot of these you're trying to help you become their best doctor on mm -hmm. their own first. Hey, look, if you're going to talk to me or not, big deal, but make sure you know exactly what's going on out there and how to keep yourself healthy. All exactly. Right? Exactly. What I tell my clients is nobody cares more about your health than you do. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and give, give me a good takeaway for how you want people, why people should worry about this and why people, we've talked about it many times already and how they can, they can really take care of their own health. Um, so I always say you don't know what you don't know, right? And so now you know. And so now you know that you got to listen to your body. If you've got all these these symptoms that are being masked by pills, or maybe you're just ignoring them, your body's telling you what it needs. Yep. So just listen. That's all you got to do. So the takeaway is listen to your body. Um, you know now what to look for. And you know that you got to start the foundation to all of it, to all health yeah. is what you put in your body and what you put on your body. So now Easy. you know. Simple. Yeah. Well, thank you, Beth. I'll stop the show right now. We'll talk a bit more offline. Okay? okay. Sounds great. Thanks for watching guys and girls.